All right. So today we're going to be talking about the basics of how to start out investigating and I'm basically breaking it down into like levels and steps because this is how I taught myself. So because um, the way the laws work in the United States are, there's two sets, um, every state has their set of laws, um, every commonwealth, which is I think Massachusetts and Kentucky only now, or Massachusetts and Virginia, they've got one set of laws, um, sometimes they're called penal codes or whatever, um, and then we have a federal law that covers our whole country. So it gets complicated when you're looking into different cases. You've got to know like what state you're dealing with. So everything I'm about to present is based in Minnesota for people out there looking into the Crowley stuff specifically. But um, it will, can be tailored easily to your state. I'm going to teach you how to do that and teach you kind of how to work through different areas of resources you would have never thought to use. Number one, nothing else you learned today. Please remember that each state's different. They're called penal codes, laws, or statutes. Um, they're all basically the same idea, except penal codes are typically in commonwealths. Um, it's your job to know uh, where you live, what your laws are, and where you travel to. Uh, you know, like they say when in Rome, but different states, the laws change and people forget. Um, no matter what a state law or penal code or statute says, if a federal law has something written on record for the same issue and its interpretation is different, the federal law always wins. So it's always good to remember that the laws at state level are good for there, but if the federal law says something different, that's the law, okay? Well, the first thing I did was I looked into, obviously, the Minnesota State Legislature page. Um, that was the easiest way for me to gain access for um, the actual laws and statutes they have to provide um, as part of the deal for CASA citizens. Every state has their own page. It'll usually end up. Um, but look for your state legislature page in your state. Um, Texas should have one. Massachusetts has one. Every state should have one. And some are better than others. Um, it will look really boring <laughs> when you start realizing, you know, there's numbers and statutes and uh, everything's broken down and it seems annoying. However, even if it's as long as war and peace, really quick, you're going to be interested in what you learn. Not only are there weird laws in every state, like really weird ones, but there's also some really interesting interpretations. Um, the best advice I've ever been given um, is never assume that those who uphold the law understand it in the least fucking bit. And that was actually given to me by the best lawyer in the United States. And uh, I'll never forget, he said, don't think they understand the law, they don't. It's up to you to know it. So I also cautioned in the beginning that those state legislature pages get really annoying and frustrating. So if you start to get a migraine, step away and drink some water and go back to it later. Okay. It gets really, it pisses you off. Also reliable and easy to access and found in every state, you're going to have to go to your local library, but the good news is it's an amazing place to go to do this work. Um, one, there's always people willing to help you that are bored and want to do work, which is awesome. They have really cheap um, printing and copying, which is amazing. Um, they usually have a um, uh, laminator in the back that they'll let you use if they like you. Um, in every single local library, there's copies of the local law and handbooks or penal code books, free ones you can borrow, and there's principal ones in the online uh, databases, and there's also federal laws that have to be in each library as well. Um, everything that you need is going to be there. Um, also, microfilm, don't ever count it out. Um, someone with there can show you how to use it, but microfilm is how they use, I don't know if you're familiar, but it's how they keep all the really old articles on stuff, and that's where you find the best information. If you sit down and really look through old magazines and periodicals on microfilm, you will find a wealth of information no one else has, ever. Um, the other good thing about that is College libraries, if you're near a college or an educational facility, they usually have additional um, periodicals and stuff they pay for that have really good information and they're usually more expensive. So uh, local libraries can't have them. So it's another great resource. Um, so number one, the first thing you always should do, and it's going to sound ridiculous, but you always start a Google to start your research and change words and phrases even if they sound ridiculous. So like I have checked my Google search and found some scary sentences on there, but the truth is, is like if you're looking for certain things, it takes you a minute to phrase it properly, but if you don't put it in a question and you just put the keywords in, you're going to get a lot of luck. And just keep changing the words around. So for example, if I wanted to look up um, Camille, David, and Ronnie's death, right, I could, for example, write on, like when I first started to learn about the case, what I did was murder-suicide in the state of Minnesota, Christmas time, neighbors reported it. And then I started to get their names. So the next time I did it, I searched their names. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I felt like that. Um, if the links you're seeing don't end in .gov or .edu or they're not reliable national or international news sources, don't even bother. Just don't. Just keep going. Um, if you can find websites that have information on them that actually isn't, like, something that you would be embarrassed to present, then you can use those sites, too. But be careful with, like, some of them. They're, they're pretty brutal. Um, 
I always say consider investing in a monthly subscription to background check services. Um, they're usually, you get usually a lot of good deals on them. Um, I have one that's excellent and I pay a monthly fee. Um, and I have unlimited searches and the information is like awesome. Um, I learned through using some of the crappy ones, like my life is terrible. Um, obviously you've got to be careful with those. If you want, I'll tell you the one I have. Uh, it's Intellius Premier. Um, that one is, I think, 35 a month, but it works fantastically. Um, and I can keep in print and I own my information all the time, which is awesome. Um, so I always recommend that. Um, three, never use just one or two sources for any piece of information you're looking to use in a publication. Um, because especially if a story is breaking and info keeps changing, you gotta keep confirming it until it's like solidly the proof. Um, three reliable places and keep a record of your sources. Boom. Can we go back to can we go back to number two when you're, when you're talking about using these things uh, like in TELUS, there is a proper way to use it and there is an improper way, correct? Yes. Well, yes, because obviously when you take on one of those things, they give you a, an agreement to sign, and you have to obviously you should read it. I don't, I didn't know I had to say that, um, but you should read it because one of the things they say is this information. You know, sometimes it can be flawed. You know, yada yada. We'll say on it. You can't use it to. Um, you know, deny somebody housing or a lease or a job or anything like that, which I, is fine. Um, but the information, especially on Intellius, I can back up with a million other sources. I've never had a problem with it. Um, and I don't use it to discriminate. I use it to help lead me to other answers I need. So, like, it will give me cell phone numbers or it'll give me addresses or jobs or occupant, whatever. And those things help me get in touch with people or find their relatives. So that's what I usually use it for. And Make not sense. for, yes, but not for cyber stalking and not for oh, things God, like no, no, no. There's a, or anything. I'm glad you said that. No, I'm glad no. you said that. Yeah, no. These things exactly. will also state that on there, that you're not supposed to cyber stalk or use that information yes. to cyber stalk. You have to do that to sign up. You have to, you have to agree to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, against the law. I'm glad you mentioned that, Greg. Thank you. All right, so what are you legally allowed to see? You know, the truth is, is you're supposed to be able to see everything. We're supposed to have a transparent government, but we all know the way the world works. On the interest of saving time, um, I could tell you that as people in the public, we are entitled to the following, but, I mean, in all the years I've done this, it, it's been really eye-opening. Um, you are allowed to, and usually there's available almost right away, public records of court proceedings. Um, unless the case is still pending or it's an open investigation. Um, public cases that are high profile, um, but you're supposed to be able to see them once they're closed. Violent cases are very high profile when it's over, you can see it, but usually you have to pay a fee and typically you won't get access to things like the photographs or the scene video, obviously. Um, some states, the like Connecticut after when Sandy Hook happened, they released that, I think, six months to a year later and just redacted barely anything. Um, and it was really interesting they were willing to give that out, but if it was Massachusetts, never. Um, you have the right to see autopsy reports, um, especially if you're next of kin. Um, however, like in states like Massachusetts, um, and like I said here, I'm talking about Minnesota a lot of the time, but in Massachusetts, for example, um, unless you're able to either prove your next of kin or you're able to give them a damn good reason why you need it, they will not give you an autopsy report or talk report. They won't they'll laugh you out the door. Um, in New Hampshire, if you have a good reason and you walk in and you like talk to them and give them coffee, they're like, sure, come on in, read my file. Like really weird. Um, so, um, and they can deny your appeal if that's the medical examiner. Um, you can see anything by local and national news sources. I prefer to use information that actually is done by places overseas. Uh, we all know that the media is owned by like the same four people and it really doesn't matter. But I like to use other people's perspectives on top of the ones here because usually our news is quite different. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, it's less biased, at least. Uh, there's still a piece of shit, but I think I said thirds here, but, you know, either way. Um, you're also allowed to access something, this is going to, like, blow your mind. The Social Security Death Index. Have you ever heard of that? No. The no. what? what? Social Security Death Index. Oh, no, I haven't heard Never. of that. Okay. The no. Social yeah, this is a great piece of information. However, I will caution you. Yeah, I'm going to caution you ahead, though, just like I'm glad Greg brought it up, that you can access people, people that are deceased. You can go into the um, Social Security database. If they're dead, you can access things like their Social Security number while they were alive, their date of birth, um, a lot of their personal information once they're dead. Um, and it's something that people almost never think to use. As long as you don't steal the numbers, uh, you can use it because it's public information. 
but you can see the numbers, obviously, that's just dumb. Um, family immigration and papers from the census since we began taking it are also available online. So those are the things you're allowed to see. Any questions? And with the Social Security, um, you said it was the database? It's called the Death Index. Okay. The, social, um, the Death Index. Death Index, awesome. Yeah. And if you Google a name and the state with the Social Security Death Index, usually it will just come right up. Okay. And that way you can confirm if the person you're like looking at is the same person or if you see information on your, your search, like your employees or whatever, you can double check the date of birth to make sure you're looking at the same person before you say, oh, this person was arrested. Oh, that date of birth mm -hmm. is wrong. It's like that. It helps tighten up your story and your information so it's less likely people will find flaw in it and make you look like a jerk. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So Greg, hit me with the next one. Um, now, I said on here, hit me with some of the tricks you use and we'll be on our way. Um, I said, get ready. This stuff isn't all that impressive, but these are helpful. Um, I use online yearbooks, which you can just Google the high school and the graduating year. And if they have yearbooks that have been scanned online, you can look right at them. Um, not every school has every year of graduation, but like my high school has a ton of them. They're great information. You find out who people are friends with, what clubs they and things they were into. Um, see what they're about before the world gets to them. And that helps you really look at their character a little. Um, obituaries are like my godsend. I hate to say that, but obituaries find everything that no one else finds. Um, if I'm looking for relatives or a way to contact someone, obituaries are always the way I go. Um, okay. I told you I did searches and phrases on Google. I add things like arrest record or um, sentence or things like public public records, things like that. That's how I get my information there. Um, and I also Google the address of the person to make sure that there were never any domestic violence calls or other crimes in the home. Um, because property crime, whether the person lived there or not, will be recorded and it will look the same. So just want to double check. Um, I comb social media under a, I don't cast this anyone. I don't use it to talk to anybody. But I do have a separate social media that no one knows about. Because oftentimes I need to collect information from them like if their spouse is safe, things like that. But I don't talk to anybody using it. And I don't violate anyone's privacy. I don't cast this, any of that. It's more for the sake of being able to see things like, are you safe? Things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also get things like their hometown um, to help you confirm who they are. Again, this is about confirming the identity because a lot of the times you're going to see things like, um, what's a good example? Um, okay, good example. So my wife, <laughs> my wife has another good woman who lives in our town with the same exact name, like beginning, middle, and end, and it's, a, it's not a common one. Uh, when people look up, they're one of them. They're both really good people with great reputations, but one is a real estate agent and the same age as the other one who's a firefighter. So when she gets looked at for jobs, they'll say, well, why were you a real estate agent? Well, I'm not. I'm a firefighter. So it's one of those things where instead, if you take that name and you type it into the death index, or you take that name and you type it into, you know, social media, so you can find it, you can go, oh, okay, here her date of birth is this, not this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the rules and tools. This is the wrap-up part pretty much. Never jeopardize any investigation. Stay away from all scenes until cleared by local authorities. And never, ever attempt to speak to witnesses or people that are being eyed by the police, people that could be armed and dangerous. Interviewing is not part of journalistic work, really. It's not. Um, questioning people is fine, and interviewing on a casual way is fine. But it takes a while to get to that level. Even I still screw it up. So I recommend people stay away so they are highly trained. Um, never interview others. You're doing research and safety and mentally training-wise, you could really get hurt. Um, bring and wear gloves <laughs> um, because if you end up holding aging papers from books at the library or you handle microfilm, you the oils that are on your hands corrupt the records and soon they'll be gone. So I always say bring plastic gloves with you. Um, keep a notebook and a pen on you at all times or keep some sort of note app on your phone so you can write down things quickly while you're going about your life and you can look into it later. Um, open a folder in your email. I know you and I went over this, Sophia. Um, Greg, mm -hmm. I try to give information to, but Greg doesn't listen to me because he's an ass. Um, so if you have, just kidding, Greg, I love you. Um, so if you want to have a folder in your email, it will document everything, time and date, and helps you keep everything in order. And for different cases, I keep different folders. Um, the next one's a huge one, <laughs> huge one. Journalistic integrity relies solely on keeping secrets. 
meaning don't give away your sources. You don't ever lie to people. But they say to you, where did you hear that? You look them in the face and you say, I can't tell you that because I wouldn't tell other people what you tell me. Um, obviously, never lie. Your reputation will be gone. You'll never be able to do the job again. Um, be informed. Never go into a discussion or a meeting. That's, the, that's frustrating. I, I try to be patient with people that come to help out with cases, but the one thing that really gets me is when people show up and they're like, what are we doing? And you're like, what do you mean what are we doing? We're doing something over here. If you want to hang out, that's great. But like, if you got questions, man, answer them first, and then we'll answer the rest. Um, it also looks sloppy and unprofessional. Um, and last but not least, never promise anything ever to a victim or a family member because they hold on to that. And if you can't deliver for whatever reason, not only do you get really depressed about it, but they lose faith in you. Never okay. promise. I do have a few questions here. So Go ahead. the first one, never, never jeopardize an investigation. That would mean the people that were in the Crowley house on January 19th, I mean, te technically the scene was clear. So I guess I'm trying to figure out when the scene is actually clear, when everything well, is actually clear, because well, they cleared the one. scene question. the same day. Real quick, I'm going to ask you this, because I remember reading that that house was padlocked, shot and still there to collect investigative information and stuff. And they said they went in and were cleaning up because Sidra was coming. And that was very confusing throughout the story because remember, we, I, that's the first thing I asked you when we first started talking. I said, what's that about? There's no way. But that and wasn't the family, on the 19th. That wasn't on the 19th. That was later. That was on the 25th. So the 19th. On. You're talking about in January, right? The people came in, the two people you're yeah. talking about the next day. Yes, they should have never gotten in. However, they got in, I, if I remember what I read, three or four, four different places in the report, it said that that house had been padlocked, not with a code they could give them. I think it was keypad, and it should have never been open. It should have probably been under surveillance, for sure. I don't know how they cleaned up that quick, really, that scene. I doubt that. Um, I don't know how they got in, but I'm guessing they weren't supposed to be in there or somebody didn't do their job and lock up. When that scene I don't know clear, if it was padlocked. Yeah, I don't remember any padlock on there. I'll have to look into that. Okay, well, let me a, ask you this. A key, there was a lock that you had to enter a code. Yeah, yeah there's supposedly a code lock. the was that there all yeah. the time. That's like a real uh, estate thing. Yeah, that that there the after police, the police left. It was it was there after the police left, and I do believe that they gave right. uh, uh, Dan. Oh, real estate. Probably. Yeah, the real estate one, right? Mhm. Mm yeah, they should have never. That's that code should never be available to anybody. Okay. Well, Dan, That's Dan Senior, know. he's he should be the one. What's wrong with him having the code? They found them. They didn't check on them until then. So for them to give out the code and be like, you know, if anybody walked up to them and said, oh, I really need this. I left it in there. We weren't worried about it for three fucking weeks. So back up. And not for nothing, but they could, them cleaning that quick is almost confusing to me because that scene was a mess. And for them to go through it and clean up that quickly and be like, all right, we're good, but they still got in in the middle is really weird. Hmm. They definitely jeopardize the investigation for where they came to the scene. But, well, but they cleaned, from their view. Like Dominic Ramsey. They crashed everywhere. They had 40 times. I don't blame the parents. You know how I feel about JVR? What? Go ahead. Um, it, didn't they clean the scene, Greg, within like a day or something? They cleared it. So they cleared the, yeah, the, the scene page. that same day. But it was and cleaned the, up throughout the next couple of days. So there was like two or three days. Yeah, cleaned cleaning. up. And so, in your opinion, Samantha, but in the meantime, how long people they, were there. Yeah, exactly. People were there. But right. in your opinion, how long do you think the police should have waited before they had released the house to the family? Well, I can't say there's like an amount of time. But what I can say is that, for example, okay, let me give you an example of where I'm coming from. So Columbine, right? They wanted to wait mm -hmm. for the people that were in the library to be able to go in there and, and see it if they wanted to. They wanted the ones who were willing to to walk them through what they remember on scene. And they waited until they had cleaned up the bodies, location. It took a few months for them to do that. And then they let the people come in. They hadn't taken the blood off. Okay. So yeah. Let me go back, and I'll try to make it quick. So Columbine, it took them a few months for them to bring people in and get them there, and that took time. Sandy Hook, they cleaned up within a couple, within, I think, a full 24 hours, and they videoed and had the bodies out and everything. That's a different ball game. Um, and that's bloody. I feel as though it's not like, remember the other one we discussed, Sophia, the other one in Apple Valley? Uh, Pinnock. The other murder suicide? Uh -huh. 
from a while back, yes. last time we spoke? Okay. That one wasn't messy. So that one wouldn't have taken long. You remember the, the scene pictures? They, that one wouldn't have taken long at all. But the one at the Crowley house, man, that one was bloody. So for them to just be like, okay, we're good after 12 to 6. And isn't it a bio hours, And then they're going to be like, we're going to put a lock on the door and we're going to give out the code. There's nothing in there the family needed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The air is tainted on the dog of the feces and there's a piss everywhere. That's terrible. On the so blood, obviously, all of that was a problem. But I want to know how they got, why did Senior have the code at all? If it's real estate, why does anybody have the code? Yeah, that's my main issue with that whole thing was that it was a bio, biohazard. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, I think that's well, that's my that problem is the fact later. that they lost it, gave out the code, and then hung out around the building. Why were two? Okay, here's the question. Why were those two particular people who have no reason to be there, who are shady as hell, getting the code from Dan Sr. to walk around their dead friend's home? Why? They didn't need anything in there. Or three weeks before that, they would have found them in there. Oh, you know what I mean? They. Yeah. Yes, I mean nobody needed saying, anything until they found him dead. Everybody wanted were, in on the scene, were, but they, they were wanted trying to, to find shit. out. They were trying to find out why this happened. They were trying to find out why yeah. their friend was guilty. That's not their job. Him. Their job is to stay out of the way. That's not their job. They're not investigators. They should absolutely, even if the investigators are the worst ones in the world, you give them the respect of not going in. And the amount of people that they afterwards, remember when they were, I told you they didn't wear booties? Just took their shoe prints out was asinine. But on top of they it, they had people. Did when they were inside the house, and they did later Remember on. the end they took their, their boot prints? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing is like, that's not so the booties are on so that you don't leave the prints around the house. So for them at the end to be like, let's take our prints just in case, that's a waste of time. And like, put on the booties, do the job. But the other two were in there the next day with the code, still I find very strange, walking around as if nobody was in their bed. And it's not their job. Mm -hmm. I was very bothered by that. So in my opinion, I can't tell you a time span, Sophia. I can't do that because it depends on the bloodiness of the scene. But think about how bad Columbine was. And this one here was almost comparable, even with those three people. It was really violent. And um, a smaller space. We were in the same size as the library, actually. Less people dead, but the same amount of, of gore and, and, uh, and bodily items. To the point where no one could have been there, I think, for at least a week. But even so, they been escorted by the cops. Yeah, I, Makes sense. I tend to have to agree with you on that one because, I mean, when you're <laughs> like even at a doctor's office and you spill blood, they have to come in, they clean it up, they sterilize. You know, there's all kinds of procedures. You're in a house that has dead bodies decaying for three weeks, feces uh -huh. everywhere. Yep. That place should have been locked down until the professionals had finished cleaning. Yep, and, and I couldn't it. believe that. I couldn't believe that. That was my biggest complaint right away. I said, what were they doing in that house? And then I said, because the timeline was so strange, I remember thinking, why were they? And then when I found out that they'd gone in there and I saw these, like, crushed beers on the ground and, like, it looked almost as if after the scene, like, a few days later, a week later, when the scene people had cleaned up, they'd painted some things over. They, you know, that at that time, if they want to come in, when things are painted over and cleaned up and they want to have a beer for their friends, I get it. But the day after, because what, you think you're going to go in and be Scooby-Doo? Like, that's, that's so ridiculous that that is so suspicious to me. Like, you're not, you're not Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> well, if that was even what they were actually doing in that house. Well, we know they weren't doing anything they were supposed to be, right? My opinion is, is that mm -hmm. they wanted the scene when the police went in to look like a hate crime. But the police went in thinking that it was a murder-suicide. So the friends went back a couple of days later to seal the deal and finish setting the scene to make it look like a murder-suicide, hence adding this, that bullet that was in the attic. Now, that's not a bad theory, and I'll tell you that I mm -hmm. can't, I can't, if we're playing Clue, I can't show you a card to say no to that. But I'll say what I mm -hmm. think personally, i got to tell you, I, I slightly disagree. Uh, they were in there the very next day, and those friends were in there for no reason at all except to be in there to paint evidence, 
take things that weren't theirs, in my opinion, and to do something that was definitely nefarious, because I don't care who you are, you don't want to go into the house where your best friend and his wife were left to nothing but a spinal cord in their neck. That's all that was left. Mm -hmm. And their child. You know, nobody wants to go in that house. Like, no one. For the, them to want to go in makes me think that they are very, very sick and dark people. And I think they were yeah. in there, and they knew they could get away with it, and they had ulterior motives, for sure. I do think that. Yeah. Those two people are very bad people, in my opinion. That's something that I do agree with, absolutely, because nobody yeah. in their right mind would go into a house that was not properly cleaned <laughs> yet. Nope. And, and nobody wants that. to be there. Nobody. And that's the thing is also, why would you chance that when the neighbors themselves were like, well, we were watching Christmas presents pile up. They're going to be watched in that house. So I know it's not right, but people, you know, they act like they, they turn in the breakneck syndrome. You know, they see an accident. They look. People are going to be driving by if the tape's not up. And you decide you're going to take one of the guys who had flowers or something weird. You're going to just traipse into the home across the street after they found the people dead. Like, are you an idiot? And then on top of it, so that my biggest problem is if there was a coat lock on the door, like like the real estate style, there is absolutely no way in fucking hell in millions of years that James Senior should have had it or anyone else. The, the police wow. chief and maybe the head investigator should have had it at the most. I don't I don't understand why Dan Senior shouldn't have it because he, 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 he needed nothing idea. in that house. He needed nothing in there, and not for nothing. But the family is the same. You have to keep them out. Family will accidentally paint scene, Craig. So they want to, John Bay Ramsey's mother, and I, I believe a million percent that her parents did not have anything to do with her death. Her mother was so overcome by seeing her daughter's body, she ran to her and grabbed her. And she wasn't thinking, she was thinking like a mother. So the father shouldn't be in there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You couldn't be. But no way. And he had a key to the door, yeah, but when you put the real estate padlock on with a different set of circumstances, that's how you keep yeah, the family true. out. It's, it's different. They hadn't found the. They hadn't found her body yet, though. We're talking about a day two later, right? Yeah, but no, we're talking about the day after with the two that went in. Yeah, for the Crowley case. Yes. What are you talking but about? For the, but for the John Benet Ramsey case. Either way, that part that's the but that's the point, is either way, that's why you, that's the whole reason why you don't let the parents have the code, whether it's the next day or the day of. The families are not thinking rationally and protecting the investigation. They can't. They're thinking like well, family wreck. Yeah, but they it was their house, too. I don't know. It was their house. Well, the, well, the family was in the house when it happened. I guess that that's different. I get yeah. what you're saying. I do. But let yeah. me, okay, let me try something different. Yeah. Go ahead, Sophia. Sorry. You remember the uh, pen Pinock case, Greg, where mm -hmm. the brother contacted the police saying that he thought he found a bloody towel and then he kept the bullet that he found? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, so he's a he wasn't thinking know. clearly. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't thinking clearly. And right. But that house had been cleared for him to go in. Maybe so, the right. house was cleared for, for Dan Sr. to go in. No, no, but it wasn't. That's what I'm trying. Okay, so let me let me explain it like this, Fred. I think it was. There was so there was so much blood and body on the floor. They could not have had it sampled, and everything done. People they go back to scenes for several days when it's those kinds of situations to collect more evidence and see it in the dark and the light. I mean, by the time they started going through, you can see the pictures. It's nighttime. So they needed daylight to see it. So. And even if they had everything they thought they had, there was a good chance they were going to miss something because it was it was eveningish. So no, it was day. So no, they're in there at some daylight. Yeah, this is all daytime. This is daytime stuff. This is yes, like no, three know. in in the afternoon. Okay. I know. That's what I'm saying. Three in the afternoon in okay. January is darker than nine o'clock next morning. So what I'm saying is, is they needed to leave it. They collect what they could that night. Take pictures of what they could that night. They needed to leave it overnight and then go back and look at it again a few times. They needed. They had a whole group of investigators that didn't get a chance to walk through the scene. But here's the thing, Greg. Okay. When you are a vi when a victim is in front of you and it's your loved one, you are not going to protect that investigation because your first priority is your child or the person you love. You're not thinking, oh my God, they've been murdered. You're running to their side because, oh my God, they're gone. So they're not able to be allowed around it and open. They they can't leave that door open because the mm -hmm. chances that the person can show self restraint and overcome their natural need to be with their child is impossible. It's so wired. Does that make any sense? It doesn't in this case because they're not because the bodies aren't in the house. 
It didn't matter. The biological evidence was tons of blood, sure. tons of it, and hair, yeah, but, and body, yeah. skin, feces from the dog, teeth. They can't. They jeopardized all of that. Well, all and of the police through. work. All, all of the cops are are gone. All of the investigators are gone by by January 18th, one day be, before these people are in this house when they clearly shouldn't be. I don't think there's any doubt. Were they found the 17th or the 18th to begin with? They were found on the 17th. The investigators stay there all night, and then right. the scene is the and and then they leave the the following day on January 18th. Yep. But they but they make it very clear to say that they cleared that scene. They cleared the house at about 5 p.m. The house was they clear. I think what they meant by that, clear was they all the authorities had left. That's clear. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. hadn't left. But they hadn't what? left because no, they hadn't left yet because then they stay there for January 17th all the way through January 18th. They clear if they leave for the night to sleep. They keep it under they a lot of times. They cleared it. They, they cleared it outside the door. They cleared like they the clear it. scene. They, they, whatever their maybe their terminology is different than what we're talking about, but they cleared that scene within a couple hours. The scene was cleared, and then they they brought in BCA, and then they brought in every everybody else. Right. So the clearing of the scene is them taking pictures and video, and before the sample, the ME should have been there. Um, yeah. There should have been people that went through and did that, but here's the point, Greg. It doesn't matter if they suddenly say, okay, the, the scene's clear. They need to, okay, think about the Simpson case, right? Remember how long the case went on, even if it was high profile, there was two people killed and it was bloody, was it not? They yeah. kept that scene preserved outside in Los Angeles with rain and everything else. They kept the blood preserved on the ground because they knew the jury would have to see that scene. Two people bleeding out on the ground with tile, no children, no hair, no dog, no no teeth, no skull, spine, okay? And they kept that scene pristine as they could. They did a great job until the, the jury could get there, right? They had no right for anybody to be in that building because there were three people dead. That's extra blood, and that is not a murder suicide. They cannot declare a murder suicide. So the ME does all of the autopsy stuff and says the cause and manner of death, and then they go back get the box reports, and then go back and sit down and have that discussion. That means that that scene could have been completely under lock and key by no one but the investigator and the chief, maybe, maybe the ME, until they had to sit down and wrote the paperwork out. That's unacceptable. Period. Greg and Samantha? Yep. The scene, they wrapped up the crime scene and closed the house up at 4.45 a.m. on January 18th. That's really quick. Yeah. yeah. yeah really quick. But they, but they cleared it within a couple hours. So it's their terminology that has been kind of, you well, know. Right. Clearing a scene can be leaving for the night. Me. You have to understand that. that can, okay. So, for example, once they cleared Columbine, I'm going to use Columbine again. They cleared Columbine for bombs and everything else. They went through. They found the shooters. They found the bodies, right? They knew they couldn't remove them right away, and they needed some pictures and all that overnight. So the crew that came in, they sent home to sleep. They cleared the scene. And they brought in another crew to keep guard over the entrance of the school and the entrance of the library. Okay. They cleared the scene, though, because there was no one in there. They went home to sleep. Then they come back the next morning and resume the investigation. Clearing the scene, I don't think in every case. Now, I could be wrong, but I know that I've never heard the terminology used to mean the place was cleaned up and spiffy and ready for assholes to walk through. Like, sorry. And not for nothing, but they had nothing on their shoes to protect prints or any other fluid that could have been on the floor. Um, I mean, they really, that is really sloppy work. If they decided in that moment, okay, this is a murder-suicide, and went about it like that, they did a sick injustice that can never be undone. You can't do well, that. Well, they, they did have stuff on their feet when, you know, when they went into the into the house. I think when the first two cops went into the house, they didn't. They're the cops. Because they, they didn't know what, what was going on. They're the cops. Everybody else should have They're had. the cops. They're the cops. Yeah. <laughs> they are the cops. They can do that because they can account for the water and the dirt and the snow and all that. The two assholes we're talking about were not in there. They were in there knowingly creeping through a crime scene. Do you see what I'm right. saying? They weren't But the crime shit. scene was already cleaned up. They had no intention of ever coming back. That's it's very, not, very not, clear. You're assuming that. No, you're I'm not assuming, assuming that. that. Where do they say that they have no intention I, of ever coming back? Because, because okay, so they had when they did the cleaner? 
to come back uh, two two days later and then one month later they had no intention of ever coming back to that house once they left january 18th now that that's just what i'm thinking that's just what i'm guessing yeah. but that's, that's my that's point you're guessing. Think. you're guessing but you're guessing but it's but it's based but it's based on on what they've done it's based on everything that they were doing up until that point and there was no indi indication anywhere in those reports or in any documents that they had any intention of coming back beyond that point. Well, if they That's say that very, on paper, Greg, to me. Greg, if they say that on very paper, then they're admitting that they didn't do a full and thorough investigation. If they write in their reports, we're going to be back later, see you then, that would sound like ridiculous. Here's the deal, right? I know what you're saying and I get what you're saying, but what you don't understand is that's exactly why you do what I'm telling you you should do because you are going to have to go back. And that's the thing. You have to. There's going to be a, a three people dead. Not if you uh, have the case solved. Not if you already have the case solved. Which that's from the their problem. Point, they don't have the right have. to say that, though. They were on scene barely for a few hours. They are not the medical examiner. And they didn't have cops reports yet. The, the cops' job is not to determine what happened. The cops' job is to gather the evidence, analyze the evidence, put it together with the toxicology and the autopsy reports. Everybody has a role they play. You can walk in there and go, well, I'm the judge and the jury because that's not their job, right? They play that's what they did. Jury, essentially. <laughs> that's pretty much what they did. That's outside of the scope of what they did. And what I'm trying to tell you is that's wrong. Oh, I get <laughs> that's that. That's wrong. I get that. I get but that's that. what I've been arguing okay. the whole time. Okay. Asking that. Yeah. Real, Sorry. real quick. How did the cleaners go in there, Greg? The cleaners were the cleaners began on the 18th or the 19th, and um, they were the they were still in there on the 20th and most likely back on the 21st. So I think they were in there for and, at least three three days, if not more. That's more time and than the cops. When, wow. And when were the guys in there? The guys yeah. were in there January 19th. Okay, so the cleaners were still cleaning, and that house was not available for people yes, to be Sophia. in there because it was still Thank toxic, you, and it still was a biohazard, you, and they were still Thank in there. You. Thank you, Sophia. So we know that they were in that house when it still was a biohazard. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's an issue because <laughs> now they're going home in these clothes. They've exposed their family. They've exposed everybody else in that car. I'm laughing at you so hard. <laughs> and, the, and, Me? and they hadn't, they hadn't found you. two, You're two hilarious. bullets yet. Sophia, I love you. They hadn't found two very important <laughs> bullets yet, which is crazy. Yes, they haven't. They're planning to go back. Ah. Twice. Twice. Yeah. And they only they only go back because they were told to go back. But the two they, assholes they, they walking around playing back. Scooby and Shaggy. If Scooby and Shaggy were walking around making moves, they would have never gone back. But, but even they missed miss one bullet because they According only saw the them. bullet at, the bullet in the attic. They didn't see the bullet that rolled out of the of the carpet one day later that was tied to the daughter. So now, they all missed hear me, that. Hear me out. The crime scene cleaners I know were the ones that said something about the, the rug one, right? But other than that, you and I are going to come to blows if you don't understand that you're taking the word of those two motherfuckers over the entire said, eyes of the police department. Who said I'm taking the word? Who said I'm taking the word? Well, you said, well, because what you said was they missed two bullets. We don't know for sure they missed they two did. bullets. They missed one, at least, under the rug. The one in the attic was reported by the two assholes playing Scooby and Shaggy. And they yeah. are buying sacks of shit. And they missed it. Yeah, and they missed that, that bullet, too. So we can, we can disagree on when the bullet was, was there. The only thing that's going to prove to me that there that there was a a bullet there or that there wasn't a a bullet there is a, a photograph on January seventeenth that shows right. that there was a bullet there. I but do not way, think. But listen, I do yeah. not think. You know, it is, it, and and it's it, anything's possible. It, but to me, it is highly unlikely that somebody is going to go into the house on January nineteenth when everybody's watching in the in broad daylight shoot something into the attic and then and then leave all within about five ten minutes i no, i'm sorry Wait a minute, time out, time out. where are these facts coming from when did it become daylight when did it become five or ten minutes and when did silence cease to exist hmm. well the silencer yeah the silencer thing you know that's that's definitely there but uh, again we can't say that it's a silencer. why are you saying five to ten minutes though and why are you saying broad daylight where did that come Space, from that's based on the the 911 call. Right. They made the 911 call. They were probably there at night. Mm -mm. 
they were there in in the daytime. It was broad if we daylight. can believe them, if we can believe them. No, no, no. And you you only need seen... to believe the person that made the call on January nineteenth. Whoever made that call and said that there was a suspicious person, not person, but person inside of the house right. on January nineteenth. Right. I get what you're saying, but the but the bullet itself was was explained and and pointed out by those assholes in the house. I'm not sorry, but the 911 call, I get what you're saying, right? I don't think they were there five or ten minutes before they were seen, number one. Number two, whatever was going on in there, they were not sitting there with their Bible praying to the Lord. Okay? We all know what was going on in there was not choir practice. <laughs> we don't right? know what was going on. I don't believe we do know what was going on. I'm not ready to, to uh, assume that I know what was going on at that but point. But we know they were reading each other Berenstain Bears, Greg. We know, no, no, actually, no, we don't. They might have. Oh been. my God, you're such a they motherfucker. Might have been. They <gasps> might have had that book with them. You know what? Well, right, they might have. That was David's yeah, problem. We're never. And ask them what one they were reading, okay? Ask them what one okay. they were reading. How about was the one with strangers? <laughs> we are never going to get the truth from any of them anyway. They have done their best to play games from the very beginning, and we're never going right. to get the truth. You we only have reason. what they've told us. <laughs> you are the right. voice of reason, and I love you. <laughs> and that, and there's, and there's many things we can do to prove what they say wrong that we already have mm -hmm. done in certain cases. So that yes. again shows that what they're saying is not true. They've been caught in many, many lies. But we can mm -hmm. eliminate that we're reading each other Berenstain Bears. Admit it. No, we can't. <laughs> I hate you. No, I hate you. <laughs> you can't. And it's not right. relevant. I thought it was really funny well, about they they certainly... them sitting down and reading Sweet Valley Twins. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Well, they certainly weren't praying and, you know, praying for their souls or anything like that. They were yeah. obviously they, they, up that, to something. What? The best, the best case scenario would have been that they were in there praying for, for their souls. Oh, oh we know that wasn't true, though. Oh, Greg. But it's oh, Greg. not it's probable. It's not probable. Oh, you bastard. And we also don't Son have a, a timeline of when they arrived and how long they were there. You are a bastard. We just actually we, just, we do we do based on the okay. 911 call because when that call came, um, and and here's here's the other theory or that we're talking about there's we're talking about two separate things which is even more crazier. But let's say we're just talking about this this one, and there's no clear way we don't know how they tied. This 911 call on January 19th to Chris Klein, they don't they don't make that clear, which is yes, very weird too. I thought they did. I'm almost positive they do. No, they don't. I'm almost positive in the paperwork somebody identified well, him. Well, because of the truck, him. yeah, because of because of his camo truck. That and then because of him walking around with flowers like a weirdo. Well, <laughs> so so somebody. Okay, somebody I'm going to have to okay, agree so, with that. <laughs> So here's, right? here's, here's the actual nine that you have. Somebody calls nine nine one one. I'm it giving the middle the, finger, Greg. Go it ahead. It takes the cops a couple of minutes to actually show up, but by the time that the cops show up, the people are not there. So that's what I'm what I'm saying is we do Whoa. have somewhat of a, of a timeline that shows how long they were actually there. So then they ran from you know the scene I mean? when the cops came. Cute. So the. Person who called nine one one to alert them that somebody was in the house. They called when that truck immediately drove up, or did they just that's, look out the window and say, that's "Hey, a really there's a truck question. there"? Good question. Good question. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a really so good we, point. So we we honestly don't know how long somebody was in that house, or how. Sure. I mean, I think. Have you um, ever called them to ask questions? The Apple Valley Police. Me? Yes. Yes. And actually, it was amusing because they literally told me a lie after they told Greg something else. <laughs> amazing. So are you actually amazing. expecting to get the truth from them? Um, usually, I can take a few people down and or charm them into it. Um, in this case, i got to tell you, I called a Walmart in Minnesota to get um, the records of things they bought on their ships there. And I got a lot of information. I kept telling the girl, don't give me that. You don't have to tell me that. Um, that's lovely of you, but that's going to get you in trouble because they were so open with it. So I thought for sure I could look at the Minnesota people and be like, hey, hey, you Vikings fans, the color purple is my favorite, is what I was hoping for. And uh, instead they just straight up.
have stonewalled me, and I'm guessing it's because none of them are smart enough to get their shit together. I think a lot of their documentation was done beautifully. I will stand by that. I think they did a great job with uh, chain of custody. I think they did great work there. I think independently there were a lot of great investigators on it. When it comes to, like, you know, Peter, Paul, and Mary there getting everything together, there's no, there was no co- 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 cohesion no, at all, you know? Mm-hmm. But they, they gave me a lie, though. But usually, I mean, I deal with, I dealt with more than a few cops, and like I said, typically I can either charm them into it or look at them and be like, I'm little, but I'll fucking wreck you. <laughs> well, tell us, like, tell, oh, tell us what they told you. Which which one? When when we when I called Apple Valley? Yeah. He that um youth wait he wait a second. They told you yeah they told me that he was on vacation right yeah that's what it was they told me he was that's on vacation. That's what they told you. Mm-hmm. That yeah. and they told you he something else right? Yeah, they told me he was on medical leave. Yeah. Yep. So maybe I mean unless there was an intern hanging around answering the phones and screwed up which again that's possible. Okay, that's that's only one that's a possibility, Gregory. Um, uh, okay, here's here's something. Um, here's something on the nine one one call. It does say in the comments, um, this person, a few houses down, fifteen minutes ago. So it sounds like the person did know. So they had fifteen minutes, maybe twenty minutes, inside and outside of that house, and that's really it. That's according that's according to the nine one one call. That's more than enough time to do a lot of damage. That's enough time. You have time. no idea. Yeah, it is. But it, again, it's like, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's the most oddest thing to me. This is, this is Building 7. This, this bullet, yeah, yeah. everything connected to this bullet is the smoking gun right yeah. here. It, it does not make sense. Um, I agree. How, how they miss it. You don't miss a building falling in seven seconds, and you don't miss a bullet. Hold well, right do. above your head. Right. How many rounds were spent? How many rounds cells were found? And how many holes did they find? On that first day? Or are we talking about in general after <laughs> two months? The first day, dude. How many did they They left clean? that house. They left the house with four spent bullets and, and six casings. They were still missing And how two. many marks of shots? And how many what? How many shot marks around the house? How many shot marks? Not really much. Holes and there, there was one in just the one. living room floor, and it. we'll debate the one in the ceiling. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I feel like I've had that wrong then. Hold on a second. Hang on. I know I read mm-hmm. about somebody theorizing that David held his hand up laying on the floor and tried to shoot his own dog. So there was at least no, one more somewhere all, in the house. That's all guessing. There's there's no proof. No, that was in the paperwork. No, no it's not. It's it's. Where? No, that was what somebody, somebody said. Yeah. Almost that was positive that was Hang on. I'm going to check it. Because I'm almost positive. Either way. So There's no way. Anybody Tanya had that. two shots, right? And Kamel and yeah. David each had one? No. Kamel had two, and Rania had one, David had one. Why would but there are two? three bullets with Kamel's DNA only on it. What? Blood. And she's missing her, her head. Yes. Well, it had her blood. DNA. I mean, her DNA. DNA, blood. not yeah. blood. Greg, DNA is mm-hmm. correct. No, DNA is also blood. in serology. Okay, but, but there is a difference between DNA and blood D in, in, DNA in these reports. There are some times where they yes. find D, DNA that is not blood, and they're not yes. very good at making that clear to a common person. That's like what you. I'm saying. Yeah, they, they, when they say blood, and then when they say her DNA, because her DNA could but be blood, saliva. They didn't do low-key tests on those. They did actual DNA, blood yeah. serum, DNA Tests yep. from these they bullets. Did. And when they said the DNA w- part, that means we don't know if it was from the bullet of the blood or we don't know if it's from the serology. We don't know what was on it, but then we know they found it, right? Mm-hmm. And we know two people are on it sometimes, three people, right? Two or more, most of them. A lot of them. And they say each time them. that the other two could be ruled in or not be ruled out, right? In some yep. cases, yeah, they say one or two can't be ruled out. That's, that's why we're, we're going to do a whole thing on that. We're going to do a whole yeah. show on that one day. Yeah, because if they have unknown DNA on there, too, I, maybe I, I definitely blanked out on that one and have that sex wrong. Remember, Greg, I told you the first time I read through it, and this is my fault, it's not an excuse. First time I read through it, remember I told you I read it through in, like, 12 hours? And I was like, I think that part I, I read and I was still processing it because I, I had the thought in my head of the bullets differently. But now that I'm thinking about it, why would Camille need two shots to the fucking head? That's overkill. That tells me that she yeah. was probably the target. That's 
way overkill. Yeah, and I've made that statement for over a year that she was most likely the main target. Really? I thought yeah, I, really, or, I thought I was the first one to think of it because I didn't know I didn't hear anybody else but you say it. Yeah, um, I did a video with Greg like over a year ago. It must have been in April or something like that, where Amazing. I even stated we had gone over the DNA. And with the three bullets that are connected to Camille, now we can't prove that she was shot three times, but there are three bullets connected to her with wait, her wait, DNA. Wait. There's two bullets connected to her, but do we know for a fact there's two separate paths? Did the, did the um, ballistics people say that there was two entries and exits? That there we were could two tell, yes. exits, I believe, but the, body, the heads were so damaged that that's, that's and then, wait, 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 I'll make a assumption. They can find they, they can find the pieces of three different bullets in the body. So what I'm saying is there were two bullets. Probably I, I gotta go back and look at it. But I know there was at least three with her DNA on it, and then the other stuff was like unexplained or they couldn't rule out. I get that. But then in mm -hmm. total, they found so there was there was two in Kamel, one in Rania. I thought there was, there was two nobody Rania. in. There was nobody. There was. I don't think there were any bullets in anybody. Were there? Yeah, they recovered fragments. No. Yes, yeah, fragments did. from 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 the scene, but not from the body. The fragments yeah, no, fragments no. in her fragments head. In their body. No. Fragments, Thank yeah. You. Rania, Rania had fragments, but, fragments, but that but that bullet shot through her, and that's the bullet that that they find two days later that you can clearly see is more than a than a fragment. So right, there, there, there might have been fragments. Right. You missed it. No, it's not. The point is, is we know that the bullet was, we know one shot at least was in there because they found fragments. If they found the rest of the bullet mm -hmm. later, that's, that's one full fragment bullet. Fragment pieces. Fragment pieces. Right. But we know there's evidence of one bullet until we have evidence of two bullets. Let's open up our books and let's look at this. Under more and we need to remember that Camille was missing her hands, too. Good point. So, Excellent point. I mean, a bullet could have gone through there. Like, yeah. I mean, this is just an assumption because in the Pinnock case, the wife had lifted her hand to deflect the bullet or to show her face, and she has an injury to her hand. But wait a minute. I'm gonna see, wait a minute. I'm going to pull this up because I can tell, depending on how they describe the, um, the, the, where they were separated, if it was a shot or if it was dismemberment. The trajectories of the bullets went left to right and back to front. Who identified gunshot wounds to that? Just two. Mm -hmm. Um, hang on. Internal evidence. Pubic hair is external. Idiots. Um, yeah, morons. That's ridiculous. Internal evidence. Wavy dark hairs are covered from the right sock and placed in envelope. That's external. They say that item 31, a bullet fragment. They distinctly say bullet fragment. The other ones they label as bullets. So mm -hmm. item 42, 43, 44, 45, and uh, 53 and 57 are all considered actual bullets. So mm -hmm. Right, but those aren't found in her. Where, where in no, the, no, they're laying at the okay. scene. Right. That's that's what we're trying to figure out is what was in, what went into them, what ended up being recovered at the scene, what was still live or are active, what was empty shell casing things. I'm trying to figure that part out because that's the part I guess oh. I got wrong. Okay, um, one second. I will send you Project both. Wait a minute, one second. Projectile that... nine recovered. Hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna... Entrance... Yeah. Where? Tell us where. Uh, page four out of six. It's mm -hmm. a gunshot wound to the head lateral. It says, um, edge of the remaining left parietal bone of the skull, six inches from the top of the mm -hmm. shoulder, one and a half inches left of the posterior midline. Um, it's round, rounded in relief bevel. It's foot powder and stippling are not there, which is fucking strange. Don't even get me there. Can um, you, and the you, wound was... Can you quickly explain what that means? Okay. So, um, your body is, is broken into planes, the way you talk about them. So, the ha so, imagine your body standing there, and if somebody were to slice you down the middle so that your ass and your back half were one piece, and your front, like your face going down your stomach, and the front of your feet were the other part, like, so you were spread right in the middle of your body that way. If that makes sense, that would be interior would be the part of you with your face, and exterior or posterior would be the part of you with your ass, okay? If you cut the body the other direction in two pieces, so your left and your right are separate, that would be um, the, the parts that are crossing there. It's almost like um, where the meridian meet and uh, the, the, what are the things? Line of latitude, latitude, longitude, you know where they meet in the globe? Um, I'm making a point. Anyway, 
think of a body, okay, being broken into these planes, anterior and posterior, which I just gave you. Then if you split left and right, it would be, um, I think it's interior, it's lateral and interior, or lateral and crap. I can't remember how you do it, but anyway. Um, so either way, what you're looking at here, right, is the parietal bone of the skull is on um, the, uh, the sides, okay, kind of like your temple, but not. It's six inches from the top of the shoulder, meaning it's on the left or the right side, six inches from the shoulder, on, entered from the side of the, of the body. It was one and a half inches to the left of what's called the posterior midline. So the middle of your posterior half of your body, if it was in four pieces now, remember I said two cuts? If it was in four pieces, the posterior part, in the back where your ass is, if it's broken into two more pieces, it would be one and a half inches to the left of that line. Does that make any sense? It's so hard to explain. <laughs> okay. Um, let me think of any other way. You know the globe? Okay, think of a head. That's a good one, Kim. Good job. Think of your head, right? You okay. click down the middle, so your face and the back of your head are two separate pieces, right? The face part is your anterior. And the back of your head near your neck and stuff is your posterior. Now, if you cut it in the other direction so it completely makes a cross, then you have four pieces, right? Okay. That's the midline. The midlines on either side now are determined. So on the back of your head, we have the two pieces, and then we have a cut again in the middle. That's the posterior midline of your body, that spot. So what it's saying is it went above the shoulder, um, one and a half inches left of that midline, it was 1.5 times 1 centimeter rounded size hole, and it went inward and it beveled, which I believe is almost like mushrooming, but it basically, it's a little bit different, like it, it crumpled, I think. That one, I, I didn't do ballistics. I hated ballistics. Oh, I did it, but I hated it. Um, soot powder and stippling could all be present when you get shot like that. I mean, at close range, it's a little different, but either way, there's none of this. Gunshot powder and soot should be there, or at least the powder, um, but it's not there at all. Linear fractures, which are fractures, um, obviously, that extend off a main fracture and go side to side, um, are associated with that wound. So there are fractures of the skull that come off of that main shot of the gun. So you've got a, a bullet hole, like you would in a windshield, with all the cracks spreading out from it. Hmm. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. part so, this part's so hard to explain. It says the exit wound is indeterminate. The pathway extends into the skull and brain. That's where, the, where it went, the path. The trajectory is the direction it headed in, so left to right and front to back. So the trajectory is that one bullet went through her head on the side from the left to the right, and it entered at an angle to go from front to back of the head. I'm pointing at it as we do it because it makes more sense when we do it that way. Um, but the projectile itself that caused the injury, it says, was not recovered at the autopsy. Could have been at the scene. The next one is gunshot wound to the head medial. Now, if I remember correctly, this says it was at the edge of the remaining left parietal bone, so the same place where the other one went in, what was left of her head on that side. It was, a one, it was lower down. It was one and a half inches from the top of her shoulder there and an inch left of that posterior midline. And it was the same type of said inwardly it beveled. It was 1.7 times 1.3, which is different than the measurement we saw above. Uh, it could have been uh, changed in size by how close or how far away the shooter was. Um, foot powder and stippling still aren't there. The exit wound can't be determined, but it's a gun recovered for projectile. So at that point, her head was wrecked, obviously. The pathway, skull and brain, trajectory left, right, front to back. It's like the person fired two shots, one higher than the other. Boom, and then the second one was the second one there because nothing was left to the head. Yeah, um, I also sent both of you a an, an image. It's a graph, and it tells you about all the bullets where they were found. What? And You're amazing. 40, yeah, uh, 42, 43, and 44, they all have, like I said, Camel's DNA, and they are not connected to anybody else at that scene. They conclusively say no? Camel. Yes, they, they ruled out no. Rainey and David. Wow. wow. Okay. I'm just making that very, very clear. And you mean somebody else would have loaded the gun, most likely? You think? That more I than likely means there are two different sets of hands touching that casing. That's odd. I wonder how many, how many guns were used. Do you remember that detail? I'm sorry I don't remember these things, guys, and I'm sloppy and not prepared, but... Hmm. As far as we know, it was only one gun. What? Really? Only, yeah, only one. Was it ever found? It was found at the scene near his hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it was found at the scene, and it was near his left hand. Right. He had his, both his hands? 
Just his head was what was gone, right? Don't know. His right hand was gone and his head was missing. Okay, so perforating gunshot wound to the head on Rania at indeterminate range, which means they don't know how far or close he was shot. So it could have been intentional or not, actually. Entrance, right parietal scalp. That's like I was explaining parietal to the side, but the right into the left. Path went right parietal bone with internal beveling and fractures, which means, yeah, through the dura, through the brain, through the dura again, and out the left temporal bone with fractures, okay, through and through. Left post oh, I can't remember that word. Scalps with exited. Okay, on basal skull fractures. Projectile fra Wait, went through a temple. Okay. Projectile fragments in the left temporal skull. Leftward. Left them down and back. So now, now that I'm thinking about it again, I wonder if I got lodged in there. Yeah. Yes, they, they did take a, They took a fragment out of her head. Yeah. They must have. They took um, the fragment, but that's not the that's not the bullet tied to right, her. So right, but we're trying bullet. to right, but what we're trying to say, Greg, is if they find another bullet at the scene, right, and we know that we only have a fragment of Rania's, then we know even if the head is gone in some cases, right, that we have one bullet or two because it's either fragments that belong to another bullet or we have one whole bullet and fragments. That's how these they figure fragments. it out. These are fragments. These are pro projectile I know. fragments. I know, but not all of them are. The last two in Camel were not. Um, hang on. I can't believe they get internal and external wrong. That's pissing me off. Huh. But that's a, they are all really different, and that would, I would think that would be depending on how close or how far they were, right? Huh. And no evidence of soot stippling or gunpowder. I mean, gunpowder I know is usually, like, or soot rather is at really close range, I think, but why did none of them have that? Wouldn't that be stippling too? Yeah, that's what I'm saying is the rest, they should have at least gunpowder. That always struck me odd is that they don't talk about any stippling or gunpowder on David's clothes. They don't yep. talk about it. Um, His hands? On the, or yeah, what do you think? Nothing. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't talk about it at all. It's not there and in any of the shot wounds either. I'm a little feeling and stuff. And so, I mean, if it's up close and personal, it should be there. Right. Absolutely. And if it's not up close and personal, you'll still have, uh, I believe, gunpowder, especially in the size of that house, how far away they could be max. Mm -hmm. No way. Hang on. And that I'm powerful sorry. of a gun. What, what kind of gun was it again? Nine millimeter? The, um, it was a 45, I believe. Was it, okay. Greg? It was, a, it was a Springfield 40 XD. Okay, I'm terrible with guns, 40. to be honest. I'm awful with guns. It's a, it's a and powerful. And he used hollow points. So you have hollow points, and then you think of three bullets connected to Kamel. That is seriously, I mean, that's that's overkill. Major that's overkill. overkill. And a half. Yeah. I, that's, that makes me wonder if the shot, do they ever say officially who was shot first, second, and third? They're just assuming that David shot first twice. They mm -hmm. can only guess by, by whose blood is on who and et cetera, et cetera. Well, they can't guess. They can figure it out that way. But what I'm saying is if he did it under, under mind control, it makes, I get that. If he didn't and it was someone else, then whoever that was, that person already killed Camille with that first shot. Why would they shoot her head again? That's, that's overkill. I completely agree, Sophia. I don't think he was mad at Camille. <laughs> I don't think they ever even raised their voices at each other. I mean, if this was a pact, then why do it three times? At least, well, at least two times, possibly three. If, if it was a pact, why don't they each have a gun at each other? Well, I'll go. I'll go even one, one, one more. If if David's gonna gonna do it, if he's guilty, why doesn't he do it at at close range to make sure that he only has to hit him once, which right. would have soot and and stippling and and all of that on it. And you know what? Too, he would have done that to spare them the pain of living through one shot. So I don't think he shot them at all. Now, he would have spared them the pain of being shot and surviving it. You're right. And in the living room of all places. Well, I think Why they were in their bed. But Ryan didn't sleep in their bed. With the curtains Ryan open. With the curtains open. Don't forget. Ryan didn't sleep in her bed. She was in the living room all the time. So that makes sense. But the curtain being open is really weird. Yeah, to have a witness. You know, I it's, wonder it's, if... Go ahead. No, I mean, the curtain the is the conundrum. Yeah, I wonder really if a, somebody did like it and opened the curtains like at the end. 
I have to wonder if somebody did it at, in darkness, whether it was early morning or late at night, and then opened the curtains, like, as a gesture being an asshole. Like, opening curtains, like, let's put the sun in. Like, people do that shit. It, you know, it, if, if if somebody opened the curtains thinking that that would help people, help neighbors and help people see the yeah. blood on the find wall, them. then, yeah, then, then they did not understand the layout of that house. Because, Which means, um, yeah, you're right. Because standing at that front, from fr at the front window, based on what Dan Hinnon has said, and, and I think he's accurate, he would know. Yeah. He's been there. He's walked up to it. Right. From that front window, you cannot see blood writing on that wall. So but does it depend on the reflection from the direction of the sun or anything? That's a good question. I I, I know he was there during daytime, so and, and remember, with the winter Judy, as well, because winter Judy, will change. Judy Proc now, everybody who looked through that window, nobody says that they saw blood writing looking through that window. It's right, only but I don't later think on. But I don't think that person say, okay, so I know where you're going. I don't think that David, for example, right, if he was going to do it and, and keep the curtains open so that, or whoever did it maybe could keep the curtains open so they could be found faster, they're not banking on that, that wording on the wall to be what, what finds them, you know. They're I just think opening David, it so they're would, found. He would, David would, I'm just guessing, I don't know David, but I'm, I'm right. guessing that, that he would make it clear that he right. did it if he actually did it. I agree. Yeah, I, I honestly think that he probably would have recorded it if he did it. Oh, yeah, why answer. not? He recorded Sophia. everything. Else, right? Sophia, good point. He recorded Unless everything he else in his life. He documented everything else. We so, know if they were ever checked for, for hidden cameras and pens and stuff. <laughs> I've been really saying that for a year, too. <laughs> no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Go back for one second, because I think we just, I don't know if I got here late, and that's possible because I'm an idiot like that, but let's review one second. One, we all, I think, are in agreement right now, at this point in time, that if he had done it, he would have recorded it like everything else. That's a great point, Sophia. Good job. Number two, I don't think he would have ever done it in a way that would have caused two bullets to be necessary on his own life, because he's not going to leave her in a position where she's going to suffer. I agree. Three, if the window was open, which is unusual for them, and we don't know if the curtain was closed and then opened or what. But I'm wondering if the window was closed and that like they were killed in darkness early morning, late night, and then opened by the perpetrator or left open by David, you know, or whatever, whoever did it so that they could be found, not by the blood on the wall, but by the window being open that they would be found, period. But that seems to me like somebody's angry at Kamel, somebody wants them found and has that feeling for them enough that they don't want them to rot. And it tells me that whoever it was, you're right, doesn't know the light out of the house, but it's taking these extra steps to almost care about their suffering and stuff. It makes me wonder mm -hmm. if it's somebody close, close to them, for sure. I wonder if Rania was collateral and she got hit by accident and the dog was spared. Yeah, and I've said that too, that she was most likely collateral in this whole Got thing, shot by accident. Tragedy. It was the second bullet went through both her and Kamel, right? No, just her. Oh, there was no bullet that went through them both. There was no. there was no blood. They, this is why they they the cops think that Rania and Kamel were killed at separate times because their blood, their flesh did not mix. Period. From what they say. Their what didn't mix? Their their, their blood, blood had mixed. Their flesh, nothing mixed. Right. You know what's weird though about that statement is that remember when they showed the armchair? They're, time, they're found time on each other. Sorry. Time out. Go ahead. On that chair that she was leaned up against, remember all the blood that was on the arm of the chair? If she got shot, Kamel got shot the first time. She's taller than Rania. If she got shot and fell backward and her head, I know she wasn't thrown that way, but if her head was against there bleeding, which is what I was wondering, I was wondering how she's found flat on the floor if there's all that blood on the arm chair. And it was like, okay, well, if she blew back for originally and Rania's sitting there still between her legs untouched because of the trajectory and the blood would have gone backward in the other direction, then she gets shot again and then positioned, but Rania's too afraid to run or she knows the person's shooting and she stays put, then gets shot, and that's entirely possible they wouldn't mix because Rania would be shot in the head, but Kamel being shot in the head, she wasn't bleeding for anywhere else except her hands, which, again, we don't know if that happened until later or not, by the dog or whatever. I would, well, I would think Rainey maybe Rania's... I, I would think, I think Rania's arm uh, missing shows signs of a struggle, too. 
But but the things that her whole arm being gone does show signs. They if you so what I know about drowning, for example, is when you drown and you're left in the water long enough, the things that the fish get first are the weak joints, like your ankles and your hands, and sometimes at your neck, even though it's not that weak. But that's the whole arm shows a struggle. But I don't know that she. I don't know if he if he fought the person. Then I'm guessing that person was unknown to her. And and there were cracked ribs, right? There's cracked on ribs who? On there too. Yeah. Wait, who had cracked ribs? Rania. Look at page three. Okay, hang on. At the bot, the last bottom page. Yeah, hang on. She sealed an evidence sheet paper bag. Yeah, you have to. So, seeing the right arm was absent. Defects with jagged, tattered edges, overlies exposed glenoid fossa and lateral right ribs. It overlies them. The lateral right third rib is fractured. Huh. What? What? That's so weird. That's a And problem. they don't state whether it was, you know, before death or after death. Well, they might not know that. A fracture of a bone, they, they don't always know that. But wait a second. Okay. We have to assume people are walking around alive with a, with a broken rib like it was nothing. Jagged and clattered edges, that could have been a bite or a grab, but the skin being jagged and clattered tells me that supposed might have been a dog. Yeah, it's what? supposed to be from the, from the dog, anything That jagged. would make sense to a degree, but they could, could have taken her whole arm off, though. That arm was taken out from the from the inside, and that skin is what was clattered, I think. Right and left lung weigh 67, 56 grams. The external surfaces are green to purple because they're exposed. Red, purple, and softened. Section reveals no mass lesions. The tracheal, bronchial, tree, and pulmonary vasculature are unobstructed. So that's on page five. It would poke inward, right? Yeah, that may, that's a great point. So Kim just reminded me, too, that that, that so what, we're, what we're saying is more than likely that that would have happened um, after death. Because if it had happened before death, it would have poked inward to her um, lungs and caused marks on her lungs. And pneumothoraxes, I mean, that would have been a real problem. Can you repeat that one more time for me? Please? Yeah. Yeah, so we know that the, we can tell thinking, you think about it, like she, she's medicine, so yeah, and I got that. So, okay, so what we're saying is, if the, if the, the rib is broken, but the lung is mm -hmm. not touched, the lungs are not touched in that way. They're not obstructed. Okay, so what happens? Okay. The lungs aren't injured okay. at all, and there would, there would either be a pneumothorax in there, or there would be, mm -hmm. which would obstruct it, right? Or there'd be damage to the, to the tissue of the lung, if the uh, rib was shot while she's yeah, after she's dead, it's not going to make marks on the on the lung because if it happens while she's alive, those marks are rapidly being fixed, and therefore they're going to be they're going to look red. It's going to look like they're healing, but there's nothing there. So there was mm -hmm. no there was no platelets or, or blood being sent to there to heal it. That means she was dead. See what I'm saying now? Yes, I absolutely do. Yes. Okay. You see, you, Greg, are you with me? So do you think that this could have happened when her arm was being removed? I don't know how the break happened, but I know that the break happened after death. Because if it happened if it happened before, there would be signs of healing and scratching and spit on the lung. And there's nothing. Okay. The body wasn't sending antibodies to fix it. So then wouldn't that okay. go along with the dog ate the daughter's arm theory? No, no, we're just talking about the lung and the rib right now. So the rib is broken, but the lungs are okay. Mm -hmm. There's no marks, there's no sign of healing, no nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Healing right. happens when you're alive, not when you're dead. So if the lung had been broken while she was alive, then mm -hmm. the body would be sending antibodies and things to the scratches it would have made on the tissue of the lung. Okay. But, but the lung itself had to be, it had to happen after death because there was nothing in the body saying we have to survive and fix uh, this injury. See what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. It makes the most sense, I would think. Nice. Thank you. Tell her thank you for that. Huh. Did they protect... Oh, no, wait. Camille had no hands at all. Right. Correct. We know if she ever found... They ever found them and bagged them for, for nope. samples of an animal? Nope. They the hands were never found, found at all? They found digit, uh, digits that but were they, consistent with fingers, you know, parts of mm -hmm. fingers, small little pieces, but not, no hands. No. So they found little pieces and not full, like, fingers intact or full hands. Correct. That would make me think, Sophia, you're right, that she held up her hand. But that would have been the first original shot then, not two hands worth. She could have been dead after that first shot. Yeah. There's no way in hell she would have That bullet would have tore through her hands yeah. and yeah. hit her face no matter what. 
Right, but if both hands are gone, that's what I'm saying. The second yeah, time she yeah. held her hand up, she would have been dead. So that's a great one. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, over the next couple of days, I'm happily a friend move. After that's over, I can really hit this next week and go through them again because apparently I'm a fool for not being totally prepared. Do you see how this is not adding up and well, why there's so much confusion? Like it's like, common, it's like common core math. Doesn't yeah, right, sense. right? If you have seven aliens and Bob has 12 pieces of pancake, how many times will it take you to get to the moon? Without offending somebody. Yeah, (laughs) while wearing a purple hat. (laughs) Right? Right? Guys, amen. That was a good one. That was a good team right there. Maybe, should I, Greg, do you want me to go through each autopsy report next week and make sure I write up like a summarized amount to explain to people what some of the stuff means or no? Yes, please. Okay. I'll do that. But first I'm going to do Sophia's paperwork through Apple Valley if they feel so inclined. And then, shit, I'm so pissed right now, guys. Why? How did your blood pressure stayed normal for all this time? Because I'm new to this, and my blood pressure is going to the roof right now. Well, you're about to go down a big rabbit hole. With those I know there's a really rabbit hole in my life. 2,600 like other a- people. No. It's like a big no. rabbit hole with a whole bunch of little rabbit holes all going in different directions. I want to go it's home. Like a spider web. More like a spider I want to go home. You want to wake up in the no, dream, Alice. Too late. Too late for that. You're, no, you're I want to call out. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out now. Good luck. Um, okay. <laughs> the last slide, by the way, is just me basically telling you, like, always do what's best for justice. Just to get back to mm. that, our, our tandem was beautiful, though, guys. Um, be discreet about what your research focus is and keep your notes safe. Don't discuss them with anyone um, because people will take your notebooks. Um, if you choose to be a complete idiot, ignore this one. Get ready to be backstabbed. Have your fit taken. Um, take information you have as true before you have a chance to confirm it. Um, things like that. And they're going to say, I heard it from so-and-so. Um, rest and recharge frequently. It's beyond draining. So, for example, Greg should have taken a mental health day today, but he didn't because he's too tough. Um, the next one is ask if you don't know, and then last is assemble an extension of your brain team. We just thank everybody for listening, and uh, please look at the records, look at the files, let us know what you think, because we're, you know, this is a lot for just a few people to take on, and we're happy to have other ideas coming yeah. in to help us out to to try yeah. to get to the truth. And occasionally, we want people with blow darts to knock me out. That would be helpful. Very helpful. Sorry. Um, be a good so, talk, though. Yeah, that was awesome. Can you, you kind of give us a little um, teaser, maybe just, you know, kind of uh, of what we're going to be talking about next with this Pinnock case? The Pinnock case is another murder-suicide that happened <laughs> on November 3rd, 2016. <laughs> I think that the audience would be very, very interested in hearing about yeah. what we have to say because – It has almost the same exact team um, investigating this case, and there's lots of parallels. So we really would love everybody to listen. It's going to be a damn good one. That's an interesting case. This this case bothered me. I'm not sure exactly why it bothered me so much, but it really was hard to go through. It's bullshit. It was weird. It was really weird. It's creepy, right? Wicked creepy. It's weird. I I don't even know how... What? I had to take like a day off after the call that Greg and I had going over the Pinnock case because it affected me, just like Greg was talking about. Afterwards, was seriously depressed. and That's the one that we that you you showed me, right, though? Are we talking about the same one? Yes. There's like four of them, right, guys? Wow. Yeah, there are. <laughs> there's a lot. What's going on, man? But that's the one you and I saw, you sent me the records for, right, on Dropbox? Yes. Mm-hmm. That yeah, that one is messed up. That one really bugs you. That um, one's really weird. That will be coming up hopefully on Sunday, and it will be a live Sweet. chat. And okay. I look forward to speaking with other people in regards to that oh. and hearing their thoughts. I'm so excited. Greg for that. worked really hard on this case. Yes, you did. You did great work. You did. And, and you did on amazing that. on it, Sophia. Yeah. And oh, based on you. that, but maybe maybe we'll see if 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 we're gonna do a uh, a part two to that one, only because it, it was it, there was a little there was more than I thought what that was actually there. So thank you. And then there's that. two thank more murder suicides that. after that, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 
you know, Google, if, if anybody really wants to see, just Google, Google murder, suicide, <laughs> Apple Valley. Okay. Yeah. I and, cannot believe and, that you have to Google just those four words to get four or more of these in that small thing. Yeah. You might have to go down page, page two, because most of it is, you know, there's a lot of the David Crowley stuff, but, um, yeah, there's at least four known cases. I can't believe nobody's questioned this officially from a federal level. If they see that well, many things going on that small amount of space, they should be walking going, hey, guys, what are you up to? I mean, are we're not we're incredibly really unhappy in the Apple Valley? There's murder. You would just a murderer walking around and up these killings. I mean, we're just we're just asking for just oh, – you guys are saying that the that this guy – killed his wife and then killed himself in all of these cases, but they're not providing the evidence. The, the simple thing is to the who, how, when, what, where. This is journalism 101. You don't just, just say, okay, well, he was guilty. Well, you say why he was guilty. And if you don't know the answer, then you press the, the cops to find the answer. And, you but you have they all they of these articles. It. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just like, well, you know what? It's a double murder suicide or it's a murder suicide. The police think that he shot himself, but they never explain why they think that. But there's and a they never though, put pressure on anybody. Right, this is why, remember earlier I told you about the entry I wanted to do where I was talking about how we know, nobody wants to see the ugly of it. Nobody wants to read the autopsy, but it's depressing. Nobody wants to think yeah. about that. But the kicker is, is if you don't, then you are literally sitting there and you're, you're, as Martin Luther King said, your life, that you begin to die as a person on the day when the things that are supposed to matter no longer matter to you enough to get like mad in so many words, if you will. And it becomes people wait for it's done. And they don't want to see the ugly, but if they stop and they look, they'd be demanding answers, but they're not because they're so sedentary and okay to just accept it and move on because we're a society where it's on to the next one, on to the next one. It's not right. Yeah. It ain't uh-huh. right. There's four all together, though, am I correct? Four of them? The four that we've just kind of dug into them. I there could be years more. years of 15 and 18? Uh, I mean, just doing a doing a quick Google Google search. I mean, if we were to really do a in depth search, who knows? Can I do statistics and, and pull up statistics and see if I can get like a pie graph going next week? Because that is a really small population for all that. I wonder if there's a killer set around. They don't want to admit it. You know, I brought that up to Greg after I got the case for the Pinnock case. Really. After I got the paperwork and I read it, I even brought it up. Will you send me the but, names of the other two that you're thinking about, too, Sophia, so I can look at those and see maybe this might be a serial they don't want to admit because they'd have to form a task force and then it'd be a mess. So I've been trying to find the fourth part. one. Huh? Greg, do there you was... have the information on the fourth one? Um, I have that. Let's see. I will look for it. I will, I will look for that one. Um, okay, but I know you. we have, yeah, I, I know there's, there's, and if you go a little bit outside of Apple Valley, there's a lot more. Oh, um, there's an Indian reservation one that I found. Oh, so nice. there's some of those, they just don't even care about looking into those. They have the money for it, too. It's bullshit. There was, but I'm there talking about, yeah, doesn't the FBI look into that? No. Or am I wrong? You're wrong. The FBI only come, becomes involved if a person is abducted or kidnapped and taken across state lines, if a crime crosses state lines, meaning somebody's picked up and then killed somewhere else, whatever, or if they're asked to come in by the authorities that are investigating and in charge. Okay, okay, I was wrong. No, no, so that you're wrong. That's an easy one because the FBI, because they're separate from us and they want to be on their reservations, they don't want to be bothered and so on and so forth, which I totally understand. Um, they usually don't get any federal help either because, honestly, every time federal tries to help out the poor Indian people, we take their oil and give them false promises. The they they want get no out. mainstream media news, no mainstream media coverage. So I'm I'm shocked that you actually found one of those. It must have been a local paper or something. Well, Canada probably covered yeah, it. Yeah, so it, it, it is. Canada? Yeah. I'm going to send you the link on that one, Greg. You know, okay. there's, a whole, there's a whole raft of them in Canada, you know, a ton of them. There's a ton of them right up and down that border, you know. I can send that stuff to you for sure. And they got a huge grant through um through the uh, the uh, the uh, prime minister up there, uh, through, uh, Trudeau. He gave a ton of money to investigate those cases, and they did nothing 
fucking with it. And I know that for a fact because I took care of a family. I was working with a family, and I still am, in a case of a woman who is partially indigenous, like really small percent. But the money for her case was supposed to go to her case to find her, and there was money that was supposed to go to a bunch of these cases that never, ever, ever saw the light of day. It's mm-hmm. fucked up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but we, I, we can't even, because they'll, people will never believe for a second if we bring into it an Indian reservation case. But if we're looking at Apple Valley and we're looking at the area around it with a small population and the same investigating companies and they're just like going in and going up, murder, suicide, and leaving, that's possible that they have a serial. That's insane. That'd be insane. Where's the nearest base for the military there? Oof. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, can somebody find that out? Do you guys know? If you can, just let me know. Um, if you guys can yeah, send me sure. the names of the other cases, though, i got to get going. But send me the names okay. of the other cases, and if we look into this. Oh, and Sunday, can one of you text me so I can call in and listen and stuff? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. This has been enlightening right. as usual. Like, uh, let's get together and put our hands in the middle, and uh, we're going to crush this, all right? Sounds good. Until we meet again. All right. You guys have a good weekend. Be safe and come back in one piece. We need to all investigate as a team. You got it. Okay. Have a great night. You too, and everybody that listened, thank you guys so much. We love you. Thank you.